welcome to this edition of For the Clarity and Closure of the Viewer's Comments. In this uh, video, I will be responding to, i.e. giving Kuliana to your comments, questions, and critiques. And I'll also be calling some people up to the carpet. Because as we all know, if you make a claim, you better be able to prove it. And if you can't prove it, well then, just like the fiction, you'll fade away. So to start off with, I draw your attention to the community section of my website, my YouTube channel. You can see here are some tabs. If you click on the community section, which I highly recommend you do, there's a lot of knowledge cultivation material in that section. Two days ago, I posted this. I said, I know that I have a lot of viewers who are not subscribers, but watch anyways. I mean, even though they belong to certain cultish groups who slander me, they still need to learn the grammar. And they sure aren't learning it from RJG or MKC, LOL. Therefore, a question for those anonymous lurker stalkers. Why do you submit to someone else's authority? Why do you consent to another individual being your authority? Overwhelmingly, the vote was because I don't have enough knowledge and it's easier that way. And there were only six votes. But still, that's a pretty high percentage there. So I got a comment in response to that. So if this individual would have taken the time to read the guidelines of my YouTube channel, which I'll get into in a little bit, they would have known that every bit of this comment violates the terms and conditions of this YouTube channel, except for the very last part. So let's just talk about this piece by piece. Jason, just relax. I mean, in any sense of the word, at any venue, that's just condescending. And it's presumptuous. They're presuming that I'm not relaxed, which, I don't know. If you watch my videos, probably 99.9% .9 of the time, I'm pretty relaxed. I'm sure it gets heavy. How would he know that? Has he been teaching grammar for five years? Has he been teaching quantum grammar for five years? Does he have a YouTube channel? with over 400 videos that took thousands of hours to create? Does he have over 20,000 hours of performance with correct sentence structure? I don't know. How does he know how heavy it could get? <laughs> Looking at that picture, I'd have to say that uh, he's gonna need a few more decades under his belt before he even knows what heavy is. But that's just an opinion on my part. Try and detach yourself from the nonsense. So now they're telling me what I what they think I should do. They're giving me a suggestion. You're a man teaching grammar. Really? I, uh, I wouldn't have known that if he wouldn't have pointed that out. Delete, remove any comments and keep moving forward. So now they're telling me what to do. I heard that YouTube doesn't favor channels that have bad comments. So now he's trying to use a, what is logical fallacy is that? Well, in any case, it's hearsay, it's he said, she said, you know. I heard that if you do a rain dance, it rains. You know, something like, or along those lines. Trying to appeal to some sort of vague sensibility. As if I care what YouTube favors or doesn't favor. <laughs> Let's propagate and move on. So now he's including himself in with me. Let the frauds be frauds. Well, I mean, I'm not going to force them to be anything else. You are what you are. There's no two ways around it. So there's no letting anybody do anything. And then he says that I'm real, which I have to disagree because real means literally no contract. And I teach correct sentence structure, which is a technology of positioning one's claims as facts. Nothing to do with real. So this gave me an idea. Um... 
hopefully in a humorous fashion, I went through this comment and taught you a little bit about the psychology of correct sentence structure. The main point being, you don't trespass on someone else by telling them what they should or shouldn't do. Ever. Because that's what the fiction does. The fiction wants to come in and assume that they have a position to tell you what to do. For example, to tell you that this Thanksgiving, you can't have more than six people in your house and you better stay six feet apart and wear a mask. Like they think that they have a position to tell you to do that in your own domicile. It's the same, same thing here, same principle. So I created a post in the community section, not only to educate people on the guidelines, but also to see how this individual would react when I called them out. So as you see here, back in the community section, I posted this. A reminder and notice to commenters. There are guidelines, terms and conditions. This goes for you with the fake name, hello, of etiquette. I know, I know, people are so used to being presumptuous and rude on the internet, not here. Please familiarize yourself with the guidelines. Thank you. And here are the guidelines. And this is available to anyone who makes a comment. It's clearly available. Every time you make a comment, you can click on this and read it if you care about honoring terms and conditions of other people's domiciles and vessels and so forth. No gossip, no drama, no trolling, no foul language, rudeness, cussing, etc. Do not tell others what to do. Do not make it personal. Simple. So then this individual left a, a trio of comments, the first of which being, what happened? What did I do? And then the next one being, you can have whatever name you want on here. <laughs> and the final one being, ah yeah, you haven't made this personal on assumptions towards non-subscribers at all, have you? Well, no, I didn't because I didn't call anybody out by name, did I? I was very general. This is ridiculous. You're, misspelling there, living a complete double standard and don't even know it. Hmm. Stop trying to be perfect outside off. Quantum grammar. Nobody's trying to be perfect here. It's just about being correct. Bring your ego out of the clouds, please. Yes, you know the grammar. Your best. Your. Your. Again, this individual seems to have a problem with spelling your. Not a dictator like RJG, RJG so calm it down. Again, telling me to relax. Again, violating the terms and conditions, which he clearly has just read. He clearly has just read them. And now he's violating them again, willfully. Singling me out like I'm some sort of bad guy. That's your perception. I never said you were a bad guy. Whatever. Screw this channel. Good luck. Fact is, I'll be rich soon and was going to give you plenty business. Oh boy. I'm really sorry now that, that I did what I did. Hmm. <laughs> Dad gummit. Av. Av isn't aligned with the stars. <laughs> I didn't know that. So thanks for, and then he says a cuss word, blatantly violating the terms and conditions. Bye, you'll never hear a word from me again. Hello? I'm going to hold you to that. Okay? That I'll never hear a word from you again. So then after reading those comments, I wrote a comment at the bottom of the post that I, sh I just shared with you before that. And I said, if being singled out and confronted on your violation, whether nascent or willful, of these rules upsets you, then odds are you do not possess the temperament or humility to perform in this arena. I say this based upon five years of teaching all aspects of correct sentence structure to hundreds of people all over the earth, all with different cultures and temperaments. 
And it is true. As to paraphrase G.I. Gurdjieff, he once said that a decent man will behave decently no matter what the situation. No matter if you treat him uh, with kindness or with meanness, he'll still behave decently. But a man who isn't decent, if you scratch him a little bit, will behave horridly. And this is a perfect example of that. Next comment comes from Intellectual Affluence. And they are commenting on the terms and conditions of the comments field as well. And they say, very fair set of rules. Imagine if we all could use these rules beyond the comment section on this YouTube channel. Well, that's a beautiful idea. And uh, I do try to do that in everyday life. I really do. And I agree if, you know, other people would do that. Wow, imagine what the earth would actually be like, what society would actually be like. But unfortunately, it ain't that way. The Earl says, Hi Jason, this was awesome. I'm curious what you think of this RJG video about his alleged claims against DWM that are similar to the concern you expressed at the end of this reaction video. Uh, he's talking about the video I did about Law Talk with Mike where he was talking about Leighton Lionel Ward and I was expressing some uh, unsettling feelings about David Wynn Miller's involvement in that Leighton Lionel Ward case. Well, that's kind of a, a moot point at this point, Earl, because RJG also has done some unsettling things which I've, I've witnessed uh, and said some unsettling things as well. Um, so, I mean, it's really neither, neither here nor there because they don't really affect me in any way, shape, or form because I'm not affiliated with anybody. And whatever they do, this RJG does is, you know, to me, his whole entire thing's fiction. Nothing to do with me. And nothing to do with correct sentence structure technology as far as I'm concerned. Marlon Pierre says, although I had my suspicions about this guy, Mark, I must say that you definitely have no credibility whatsoever after saying YouTube doesn't delete truthful content. I don't know that I said that specifically. I think that I said that YouTube will delete content that can't be certified. Meaning that now, now think about this, Marlon. Think about it very carefully. If there is such a thing as the controllers or the elite, and they own things like YouTube, all right, and you or anyone else starts making very uh, potentially damaging claims about these people, these elite or whatever, but with no evidence to back it up, with no concrete evidence, no continuance of evidence, only basically conspiratorial claims with no evidence. What, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, what do you think is going to happen? In order for truthful content to be deleted, you have to prove it's true. You have to. You can't just say, well, it's true because I know it's true, or I feel it's true. That doesn't mean crap. Not here, not these days. That's why I teach correct sentence structure, which, by the way, this is a grammar channel. And I have a feeling you probably don't know the first thing about the grammar. But you're more than welcome to study it, of course. I have over 400 videos on this channel for you to study. Because if you had studied it, you wouldn't be saying what you're saying in this comment but i digress that's what the entertainment value of this particular video is is me talking mostly with about people like this also by asking why would the owners of this platform need to be arrested further tells me that your credibility is not to be taken seriously well if that's true then marlon what are you talking about owners of the platform need to be in jail 
Do you know who they are? Do you know them personally? Have you seen them commit crimes worthy of being put in prison? Have they murdered people? Have they raped people? What are their names? By the way, I did look at Marlon's YouTube channel. I think he has about a little over 100 subscribers and about 29 videos. And those 29 videos are the exact type of content that YouTube would probably delete if someone like Marlon had the subscriber count that Mark had. But he doesn't. And no one, you know, his videos don't really get views, so YouTube's probably leaving him, leaving him alone for now. But he does have that type of conspiratorial uh, content. I'm not trolling. It's just my honest opinion. Oh, well, since it's just an opinion, then it's not worth uh, a pile of monkey crap, then, is it? Just like any other opinion. David Lee Williams says, I guess I need to go back to school, but I don't want to learn all the incorrect ways they tried to teach me when I was in school. Thank you for this video. Well, David Lee Williams, I have good news for you. Some of my best and brightest students don't speak English as their native language. That they are fairly ignorant when it comes to the mechanics of the English language. That's actually been a blessing for them and they learn faster because they're not bogged down with all that BS fiction nonsense. And I can instead teach them the rudiments of correct sentence structure as their base. And so they actually have an advantage over people who were taught English and are very good at it, like such as myself. Uh, I went to college I was an English major, and I learned the ins and outs of, of the fiction English. I've been studying Parsean language since 1986. I had to unlearn all of that uh, to learn this, so it's actually a blessing. So you don't really have to learn the incorrect ways. You can just contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop, and I can teach you the correct ways. Certifiable by the over 400 videos on this channel. David Miller, interesting name, says, you keep highlighting the fiction system. It's hilarious how people know so much, can be so confident and still be so wrong. It's almost like it's a psychological operation to misguide people from the actual quantum correctness and all that it brings. Well, David Miller, first of all, it just makes me curious as to what your knowledge level is of correct sentence structure, where you're at with it. Do you have closure on it? Are you a live life claimant? Have you used it? Have you created your own document contract, Postal Vessel Court venues? Just curious. Going by your question, um, I would have to say that you're a beginner, but I, I don't know for sure, but I would have to say that. It's just a guess. If you think about it, David, language in general and grammar in general is a psychological operation, meaning it all comes through your psyche. It operates through your psyche, all of it. So yeah, correct sentence structure is a psyop. Fiction English is a psyop. It doesn't mean anything. The only time psyop really means anything negative is if perhaps the military uses it and it's meant as a tool of manipulation to try and get control over people. However, if you learn this grammar, instead of having the grammar control you, you become a steward of the grammar and you're the master. But that's if you choose to learn it. In my last comment a while back, I made mention of Russell J. Gould being smart. I was trying to convey through correlation of how smart he was by how many people he and many others duped and corrupted. The silence speaks volumes to people who don't know the difference. Well, everybody has a choice as to what they want to do or not want to do. People choose to be duped and corrupted. As untasteful as that sounds, it's true. So, um, I don't think being smart plays into it. I mean, if you think it takes an intelligent person to trick people... 
I mean, that's that's kind of like, I thought it was a good thing to be intelligent and smart, but tricking people is not a good thing. So I think there's a little bit of a dichotomy there in the logic. Thanks for the comment. Jason XR4 says, Prehaps, but, in thinking, I have learnt, are words that negate the now time. Prehaps, but, in thinking, I have learnt, are words that negate the now time. Is Jason saying that these words, perhaps, but, thinking, negate the now time? Hmm. Well, let's see what the correct sentence structure is here. For this claimant's knowledge, oh, Okay, right here is a violation of rule one, rule equal. The K in knowledge must also be capitalized if the C in claimants is capitalized. What happens on this side of the hyphen has to happen on this side, rule one, rule equal. And I see an excessive spacing here. There's double spacing between knowledge and of, but that's a small little mishap. Of the error, okay, we have a particle of negation in this fact here. We don't use particles of negation in correct sentence structure. An easy fix would just say mistake, M-I-S-T-A-K-E, or simply put a sick after the error. Is with the claim of the prehaps and of the but, with the choice of the thinking, and then we have the particle of negation here, I-N-G, with the I-N-G hyphen garand, by this claimant. I think he means gerund here. Not sure though. And he, I'll cap this one for some reason. So there's a, just a couple little inconsistencies in the sentence structure. Jason, your uh, positional sequencing is, is immaculate. It's great. Perfect. Spot on. And I'm really impressed with your use of the uh, positional audio phrases on either side of this conjunction. 100% correct. Just a little, couple little things to iron out in your facts. That's all. Well done. Thank you. Next one comes from Vlastimil. And he simply writes Jason, hyphen, uh, Jason hyphen CA equals CA forward slash TTLE. And I think this is the comment on the Muriel Meta Biggs video where uh, reaction video where David Wynn Miller talks about CA means sheep. And as I showed in the video, I can find no continuance of the evidence to prove that. And David, of course, never gave a continuance of the evidence, never gave a source, never proved what he said. He just said it and people just took him at his word. As if it's true just because he should say it. Um, you'd be surprised how many people do that with him just because of who he was. So then Vlastimil says, CA equals A forward slash TTLE. Now he's doing the same thing, meaning he's not giving a source. He's not showing me a link where to go so that I can create my own continuance of the evidence to certify what he's saying. He's not giving any of that. He's just saying, basically take my word for it. And so I say, please share your source for the earliest nativity meaning of the particle CA, just as I showed you a continuance of evidence that in an etymology dictionary, CA does not mean sheep. I ask that you show evidence as well. And that's the whole point of correct sentence structure. Prove your claims. When it's time to step up to the plate, when you make a claim, you better be able to back it up. You better be able to put your money where your mouth is. Otherwise, it's just an opinion and it all falls apart and you probably won't be successful in whatever it is you're doing. It's very important to have that proof. Last but not least, this individual named JC comments on my reaction video that I was just talking about from Muriel Metabigs. And it says, how about you focus on spreading the good word about chief? <laughs> that just reminds me of, of uh, like those Bible thumpers. How about you focus on spreading the good word about Jesus instead of bickering? So let me get this straight, JC. It's okay for 
your cronies to bicker and to slander and to talk crap and to tell lies, which I proved in this video that Muriel was lying about at least two things, but that's okay. I'm the one that's bickering because I'm bringing up these things that I'm proving that these people, number one, don't have closure on the grammar, and number two, lie, and number three, are a completely fiction construct. I've proven that multiple times. But, uh, you know, I'm the one, right? It makes us look like bickering adolescents, really. No, that's what you look like. You're, you're exactly right. It makes you look that way. Personally, I don't... It, it, it's not important to me what I look like to other people. I've grown past that. I do what I do and let the chips fall where they may. I've been doing this for five years now. Over 20,000 hours of performance. Hundreds of people all over the earth teaching this grammar to. I'm pretty confident with my knowledge. And it doesn't matter to me what you or anyone else might think of what it makes me look like. I'm way past that. That's middle school stuff. So, as you said, adolescence. So, I mean, you guys can stay in junior high. When you're ready to move on to the big leagues, you know, you, not them, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. You're a great sample of a postmaster with bad volition. Actually, JC, I have a correct sentence structure fate writ volition claim. It tells you what my volition is incorrect sentence structure. Do you have such a document? I bet you don't. And I bet your live life claim is copyright copy claim to someone who is not you. I'll bet you any money. Why are you bringing up a four-year-old email? Because it's my channel and uh, it's a continuance of the evidence. Okay? Continuance of the evidence, there's no statute of limitations on continuance of the evidence. And believe me, I am going to be sharing much more, much, much, much more of this stuff. More emails from different members of that uh, fraternity. Emails from Russell J. Gould. Uh, emails from Gordon Michael Schiller, Mari Shapka. Edward Sloan, Joey John Lester, Sergeant Robert Horton, you name them. They've sent me emails and I got them all on file and I'm going to be bringing it out to the public so that everybody knows. I put it all on the table so that everybody can see and make their own decision. Uh, they can either be like you and turn a blind eye to it and just keep, you know, worshiping the chief or you can get out of uh, junior high and stand on your own two feet, become autonomous and think for yourself. <laughs> but that's up to you. I can't force you to do anything because that violates contract. Force negates contract. War negates contract. So it's all up to you, buddy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed this one. And uh, let me know what you think of the tone of the video. Uh, if you want me to go a little bit lighter on it, I certainly can. I just want to assure you that at no point did I ever get upset or was I ever upset about any of these comments. I haven't taken any of them personally. It doesn't, as I said, it doesn't matter to me. I'm beyond that. Um, this is just for educational and entertainment purposes only. And also maybe to teach a little bit of grammar and psychology to uh, those of you out there who are looking for examples and ways to move about, you know, in these arenas without losing your cool, staying calm, but at the same time, throwing back. Thank you. Salute.
Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.